that she posts on Facebook are very bizarre. Very. Like, the planet wants to know what's going to happen to the child if Lynette and Crook get arrested. This lady is crazy. This is a conversation I had in 2023 with the child's biological aunts. Now, I've chosen strategically to release this video at this time. Number one, I legally can. Number two, I know there are so many out there that would want to give legal support and help to these individuals to make sure that a child is safe in a loving environment. And therefore, we need to wrap our loving arms, our compassion, our support around these individuals. Because right now, they're scared. This is a situation where Lynette has used and abused a system telling lies constantly on individuals. And they fear her because of that. Well, I want to clearly state to the planet for Judge de Thomas's, I ain't afraid of no Lynette. And nobody else needs to fear her either. We need to wrap our loving arms around these women. We need to make sure children are safe, people are safe, and what's going to help that happen? Exposure, sharing the story and knowing the story and making sure that all can see the story. More eyes, more accountability and more support for these women. We've been asked to actually call and talk to two family members. So that's what we're going to do right now. Hello. Hello, is this Jessica? This is. Hi, Jessica. Jeremy and George here. How are you today? I'm pretty good. I'm on hold for a second. I'm going to attempt to call my sister-in-law because I want her involved in this on three-way. So sure, no problem. For just a second. No problem at all. Lynette is already aware of this video. She's viewed it because there's been, um, I wouldn't call it a mole, there's been a turd mole who then paid for our highest level membership on our channel, who then gave access to it to Lynette. Now, keep in mind, she's completely and totally lied under oath in court and in her deposition stating, I've only seen three, maybe four of their videos, when the reality is she had access to even the member videos. This has already been on YouTube. It's just not been released to the world. So these ladies know it's on YouTube. And that's okay. We need to let them know that they have the world, the planet's support. Jeremy, are you there? Yep, I can hear you, Jessica. Oh, good, you there? I am here. Okay, I heard I heard an, another I am here. Was that Olga? I am here, yeah. Okay, we can hear both of you. Okay. So what is, like, all of this? Like, I started to watch some of your videos. Um, Lynette had contacted me uh, yesterday, or, no, matter of fact, she contacted me the other day, and I was leaving work, and she said, some YouTuber keeps on um, trying to, like, get me in trouble, and he's trying to get Harley, and he's trying to do all this extra stuff. And then I go and look you up, and then we see all of these videos. So just to confirm, you're saying lie, we call her Lynette because nothing that comes out of her mouth is truth. It's all lies. So li I, I, I've seen it on the video. Okay, so, so even as early as today, Lynette has posted all over Facebook that I contacted all of Harley's family members. So you're con you can confirm I did not contact you. She has contacted all of you, and Jessica contacted me. Right. All right. That is correct. All right, so that's just one more lie this morning. L Lynette's telling everybody that I contacted all of you. Debunked! So you ask a very big question, what's all of this? Um, can you specify a question? Like you're, you're asking a very general, huge question. My brother and 
sister-in-law are the parents of Harley. Um, and I don't know how she got adoption of Harley, but I know that their situation was that they don't have custody of none of their kids because of their situations. Um, the mother had actually, uh, was friends with Lynette and that's how it came above like her, I guess, getting, um, adoption, being able to go for adoption of Harley. Hold on, hold on. Let me give a little more backstory as to, we kind of know how she got Harley and the adoption of Harley. So she ended up being acquainted with the birth mother's mother. She didn't know her for very long, met her on Facebook, and due to her daughter's problem and being pregnant, she thought she could give this lady Harley um, and she would be able to remain in the child's life. Um, she also had two of the children. The grandmother had two of the children. So she thought she would be hardly like Uh, okay, back up a little bit. You were breaking up. Are you driving right now? No, I'm, I have terrible service. I live in the middle of the woods in New Jersey. So okay, you're good right now. If I understood correctly, L Lynette met somebody on Facebook and worked out a deal to get Harley, and the birth mother was supposed to maintain contact, and so was the grandmother with Harley, but they have absolutely no contact now. Is that what you were saying? Yes. The grandmother, so the, the book has no contact with her at all. True to her name, more lies from Lynette, stating that the family is going to have complete and total access and interaction with this child. Now, Lynette has gone on to post, and we have all the screenshots, not going to flash it, we've shown it in the past, that her biological brothers and sisters were snot-nosed little brats, and that she had to remove the child from these family members. Interesting. So she stalks me to Otter Creek, alienates which is also ironic because Lynette has created a parental alienation or grandparental alienation Facebook group because her own biological kids and her own stepkids, you know, all eight that she claims she raised singly on her own with no help and all 23 of their grandkids all by herself. She did it all. She's a, she's a super Lynette, apparently. Uh, none of them want her a part of her life. As a matter of fact, she's had an injunction placed on her to stay out of the life of certain grandkids as well. Ironic that she creates a alienation page when she literally alienates this child from her biological family. The grandmother was supposed to maintain contact with Harley and, and give the lady the <laughs> have a connection with the other siblings that she does have. I um, I don't know if you're moving or standing still. Are you good? Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Alright, I'm standing still. So yeah, pretty much or whatever, the grandmother was supposed to keep in contact because they had became friends over Facebook. She was getting custody, the grandmother was getting custody of um, two of the other children, which would be Harley's siblings, and she had like a post on Facebook about them getting clothes or something like that, giving away clothes, because she was supposed to be getting her grandchildren and she was no longer doing that. So they ended up meeting up and I guess became friends, and then from there or whatever, it came up that Tanya was once again pregnant, and she wasn't going to be able to keep the child. And 
Then I guess Lynette or whatever wanted a child, so she said that she would adopt her. And then from there, she said that the lady was really nice and that she cared and this, that, and the third. And then once she had the baby, everything turned to hell. That's, that is the typical story that it goes with with Lynette. Yes. So, all right. So you guys gave us your backstory. I'll give you our backstory now. And, and we are both here. So, okay. uh, in a nutshell, we're full-time YouTubers. We purchased property in a little town of 100 people in Florida so that we could snowbird. A year later, we got an email saying, I just bought property next to you across the street. There's a tree down. Can you bring your tractor over? I watch you. I'm a fan. And so we didn't think anything of it, except when I got over there, all of a sudden, the very first conversations, I'm your new neighbor, hey, John's not going to be with me, and conversations got very awkward of, I don't want him here, he's not going to be with me, I wish he would die, like that's some of the craziest stuff to start meeting somebody. She'll tell you straight off, John's now like, I want him dead, things along those lines, and we were just like, what is going on? She was there, nope. Yeah, uh Sorry to even cut you off or whatever, but um, I never knew the woman from Adam, and then she hits me up on Facebook, finding me, being that I am the sister of uh, my brother or whatever, and that's his child. She Stalker's gonna stalk. She knows that I have custody of one of the children as well, so she just started telling me all her business, and then I started talking to my sister-in-law about her, like... The things that she posts on Facebook are very bizarre. Very. Like, uh, very bizarre. Um, there was a video that was on Facebook that I brought to the attention of my sister-in-law because we did not know this lady from Adam. Literally, Tanya went to Florida, had the baby, and came right back. Without a baby. Well, and then all of a sudden, this lady has the baby or whatever. Like, nobody even got the opportunity of saying, like, I'll take the baby or anything like that. They already had it situated with her mother. So, like, well, all this stuff being bizarre or whatever, I started talking to my sister-in-law about it. Like, this, excuse my language, but this is not okay. Like, this lady is crazy. She, she is. She is more crazy than you can even comprehend right now. So I'll give a little bit more backstory. During that time, she was on the property with another lady named Jamie Starr. At that point in time, we had no, no concept of who they were or anything along those lines. Uh, we did know that she would constantly ask for things. And we came, it was actually Jamie Starr who told me she followed us there. So, so Lynette and her, her ex-husband, they were married for 60 or 90 days, and then they got a divorce so they could get better benefits. Uh, so they got a, That's what I heard, too. Yeah, well, 100%. That's what they did. So from what their children have told us is they met on a herpes website, and then they got married, and then they, they got a divorce because John was losing benefits based on the marriage, and they've been together 10 years now. What the very first thing you'll learn is she'll tell you, you know, the most socially awkward stuff is, I hate John, I want him to die, he's an alcoholic, he's an abuser, and and we, we have every screenshot the, the world would need to see to back any of this up. We got the receipts! So... Did you see a video where she had posted that she was uncomfortable because John wears shorts and he does not wear underwear? And you have that video? Har Harley straddles him and she's not comfortable with it blah 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 basically making him sound like a child lester but then in the same token trying to say like he's good with her whatever whatever like that's what brought me to the fact of like this lady is crazy and she is oh she is so we uh, we we come to the realization we've been stalked to Otter Creek and they're going to build a turtle rescue because one of the things that I would constantly say is I love turtles. Just making fun of the old video clip of the kid that was on the news saying I love turtles, and they came with the intentions because we do a lot of generous giving and a lot of fundraising for different things and organizations. 
they came with the intention thinking that they were going to ride that money train with us. And, and that has not happened in their favor whatsoever. So we were gone for... Absolutely asking for money. Oh, She's it's... Always, like, there's TikTok, there's GoFundMes, and honestly, or whatever, trying to use my niece's, like, um, a herbie and sick or whatever... Like she's a mill ticket or something. Oh, she exploits Harley for for donations, one hundred percent. So the same th same thing she's trying to do to get turtles and tortoises. She uses she's trying to exploit those for money, but nobody sees any of them. And then she's doing the exact same thing with Harley. It's absolutely disgusting. It's absolutely sickening that a grown adult would use a child to exploit others for money. And the, the saddest part of all of this is the child has to live these lies out with her. I mean, that's part of some craziness right there. And it gets even crazier. There are people who have given her money. $7,000 for a legal retainer. Somebody else claiming they gave three. What fools! Her constant things are, I have a, I have a disabled child with life-threatening disease. She could die at any moment, and she needs this because her daughter's going to die. She needs this now because her daughter's going to die. And she's disabled, and John's disabled, and they can't do anything. And they, they everybody's supposed to do something for them. So yeah, she, they're completely and totally crazy crazy and i haven't even gotten to the crazy stuff yet so um they you know you, you get it unfortunately i gave her my phone number and we're very protective of our phone numbers and which is why we're calling blocked with our number um and and we've learned that lesson they've they've actually posted our number out on the internet um unfortunately but um, so, you know, we go through this process, you know, I would get really weird texts like, oh, I wish I had 70 acres. I need 70 acres for my turtles and my sanctuary. And, you know, she's back door asking and begging and it just kept going on and on and on and on. And we come back this past season and, and there, she's out of control. He's out of control. The, we, we are at a function for the town, a meet the candidates for the town. We, we are watching, we are watching, everybody sees her hit Harley in the head, smack Harley open-handed in the head. And we're sitting there going, what in the world is going on? So she did run for a, a position for the council and in Otter Creek, it's a hundred people. And the council is five different individuals. And on on um, on election day, she actually had Harley in a in a little tent. I think it's a dog. I've seen it. Okay, I think it's a it's a dog uh, enclosure. And that day, it was over a hundred degrees. Not mentioning the heat index. And Harley's on the side of the road in Otter Creek in this tent in the ground, like not okay, not okay at all. So, uh, she starts this whole Otter Creek page to fight the government. And by the way, as you're saying, she met these people on Facebook. She's met quite a few people in regards to anti-CPS and anti-government websites. And, and she used to call the CPS on her kids nonstop around the clock and FBI. Yes, for false allegations. She even took it another step and had... The FBI raid her own daughter's home with her children for making false allegations against them. This is Lynette's MO. Use the system, weaponize the system against anybody who won't do or give you what you want. In other words, exploit, right? And it, it's not stopped. As a matter of fact, as family is coming forward, as stepdaughters are coming forward, and biological family members are coming forward, what's being relayed and shared with us through these individuals is that she is actually making more phone calls, doing more things, weaponizing these systems and agencies against these individuals, which means these people need us more than ever. That means even the aspect of legal counsel and help. And I truly mean that because I'm already in conversations with individuals in regards to providing legal counsel and help to Jessica, who you're hearing here on this actual recording. Wow. 
<laughs> but she's in all these anti CPS, anti government groups where she met Jamie Starr, who which got is her the kids. Godmother, which she made her the godmother. And again, they met online, just like how they Lynette let, met Harley's grandmother online. All right. And, it, and and so this woman and John start hanging signs up all over town, stop the corruption uh, of, of back deal deals. I mean, they're supposed to be a 501c3 and they are they are actually breaking the law, uh, hanging up signs and forms and things like that against certain public officials. And, and it just it got out of control to the point of, to the point of she had her own. So we number one, we knew this. Okay, so I'm going to back up a little bit. Number one, we knew this. We had already struggled with a known meth dealer and user in Otter Creek. His name was Kenny Jr. As soon as they got there to Otter Creek, who do you think the first person they had on the property working was? Kenny Jr. And then she's crying a river saying, Kenny stole from them. How, how dare he? So then... Then they, so they're letting, they have another couple, another couple, and they're claiming they're alcoholics and meth dealers and users now, and they're crying me a river that they stole from me. They stole everything from me. What they're doing is they're letting, they're letting people who have no home genetics in on the property mm -hmm. and trying to do exchange for living in a tent or living in a shed to do anything to clean up the property because Harley's living in a dump and... And it's not okay. So, so we we get to the point she, they're they're running or she's running for a council position, and she's making all these crazy posts online on Facebook, and the community is watching, and they're going, "What in the world is going on?" So the the community does not vote for her. She has her daughter at her place living in a shed with Harley. Her biological daughter. Her biological yeah. daughter detoxing in a shed with Harley. She she pushes her biological daughter out of a moving vehicle. I mean, just to give you, these are just examples of some of this stuff. The biological daughter says, I'm calling CPS. The biological daughter does call CPS. Mm -hmm. By the way, we have all the screenshots because Lynette can't do anything but stay on Facebook all day and post all this garbage. Absolutely agree. So she, she's telling everybody this, and then she gets CPS coming out, and she starts... She starts saying it wasn't her daughter, it was it was everybody who was running against her for counsel, which is completely and totally ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And so she she's got these major, major mental issues. So she starts attacking the other individuals in the town. And she starts attacking us. As a matter of fact, as she's attacking us, she's telling her grandson she's got YouTube friends that will house him and pay him if she if he comes and lives with her, which we had never ever had a conversation or would ever even do in regards to anybody associated with her. This woman is insane. So that's more proof that she stalked us to Otter Creek and wanted to be closer to us so that we can promote her turtle rescue and so that the donations can come in so that she could ride the donation tail. So, hold on one second. She posts everything in the brother on Facebook. Oh, boy, I've does she ever. one picture of a turtle. Nobody has seen a picture of a turtle. She'll post old, old pictures from when she lived in Northport, which is about three to four hours south of Otter Creek, but she refuses to post any current pictures of her rescue there in Otter Creek. And do you guys live across the street? Have you seen turtles there? We do, yes. We have seen a handful of turtles and tortoises, uh, more than a handful of chickens, turkeys, and I think guinea hens that are, you know, bothering the neighbors as well. There's been complaints of noise because of all these birds. Ducks. Um, so there's a handful of tortoises and turtles. So when we were there, we saw George and then one other one. We didn't see, I don't remember seeing any other tortoises. I don't remember seeing any turtles. I was just curious if there was any really to be, you know, because I've never seen a picture of one and she claims that she has this turtle sanctuary. 
whatever you want to start well with. And I'm like, okay, well, you have one of them. We're going to keep posting pictures of your tortoises so just so you can have some events future donations and etc. But I've never seen one picture. So I'm just curious. So ever since we physically went to the property and we saw George, ever since then she has posted accidentally on the turtle rescue page that George might die from an upper respiratory infection like the like other the two other tortoises. Two to, so she killed she killed the other ones, not getting them the proper care. So I'm I'm gonna backtrack a little bit. So she's had she's had different uh, addicts in and out revolving door on the property, and, re, and Harley's living there. Every time she would go, hey, I've got bread. Will you come over? She said, hey, will you bring your tractor over? Will you move this doghouse for me? Every single time, it's garbage out of her mouth in front of Holly or in front of Harley. They are verbally toxic. They are verbally abusive. We've seen her physically hit Harley. We've seen it with our own eyes. The property is a is a dump, and and we did. I did call CPS personally. So I. So CPS has done nothing. Now the one thing that it has done if is. If we were here in New Jersey or whatever, they oh Harley be gone. Har Harley would have been gone the if very we very were first in New time. Jersey, like, yeah, definitely, she would have been born. So they had open freezer, garbage, rotting food. They I had mean, an it, unchained fridge. Unchained fridge. I mean, the list just goes on and on. There's videos of it. And so what I started to do is like, this is not okay. She started talking trash about us and the other people. And I was like, you know what? This child needs saved. And, and so I started filming the ridiculousness of the living conditions that Harley is living in and the toxicity of these two and the abuse of these two. And so then it started into now she's a victim of me and George and we're bullying her and it's gone on and on and on. So the last, the last attic that we know that was on the property, if you remember, I told you this girl, Jamie Starr, that she met on Facebook was on the property when she first got there. She was just there a month or two ago, and she went on a high, and, and she got a gun. She brought a stolen camper from Indiana, a boyfriend, and those two were on a meth high and started shooting randomly on the property. And that's supposed to be Harley's goddaughter, this woman that she's only seen a couple times in real life, met on the internet in the anti-CPS group. Jamie's had her kids taken away from her. These are the people that are around Harley. Now, what Harley is living illegally in a shed with no plumbing. They're going to the bathroom in a bucket. They don't have a bathroom. They have a shell, a metal shell of what's supposed to be a barnuminium, which frankly is probably going to be blown over in this hurricane coming. John is living... Can you guys hear us? I can hear you. All right. John is living... Things with her son at the same time, so that's why gotcha. like... John is living in a camper. John is is pulled out a gun on me. Uh, Jamie has messaged us, letting us know that John and Lynette have actually lost the gun, and they're losing a gun with Harley living on the property. So they Florida did not arrest John for pulling out the gun, me filming the property and the horrible living conditions. You have addicts living on the property, coming in and out, a revolving door, shooting randomly on the property. Uh, you've got you've got Harley in an abusive situation with unsanitary living conditions, no bathroom. Uh, you know, L L Lynette is literally on Facebook all day, just posting garbage instead of training Harley. How to be a young a young lady. If I wasn't actually living through all this like I am, I wouldn't believe it. I mean, Hollywood doesn't even come up with storylines. And at this point in the storyline, we don't even know anything about uh, Rhett the Rat Cunningham coming into Bubba Q's and what he's going to do to me there. We don't know anything about Judge Tobias' 
uh, yeah, Judge Grudge, to Thomas's. We don't know anything about civil protection orders coming down and then them continuing to violate and break them. We don't know anything about a hit being ordered. Uh, it, it, the list goes on and on and on. Hollywood cannot come up with a storyline like this. Reality, truth is more unbelievable than any movie we've ever seen in the theaters. I literally just said this to my sister-in-law, Olga, I'm Jessica, um, a day or two ago. I said, this woman, so we we share custody. Olga got full custody of one of Harley's siblings, his first sister, the last sister. Um, Olga works on the weekends, so I take her on the weekends. I said, I couldn't take another kid full-time because I have other siblings. Not to mention she is supposed to be managing this turtle rescue. You you got horrible connection again. You're breaking up again. losing you i i think i'm understanding what you're saying the same thing we are how in the world is she raising a child when she's on facebook 24 7 posting the most insane post anybody's ever read in their life correct yeah all right so can you hear me right now yes now we can so then it leads us to this adoption situation so we've been trying to get some answers regarding this adoption situation um, recently. So Tanya, the mother, is finally out of rehab and her halfway house um, and is now living on her own. Still nowhere near capable of having a child yet. But we are able to ask her now at this point, Olga was able to ask her some questions regarding the doctor. So, so the dad never signed anything at all. That's what he tells us. Did you just hear what I just heard? The biological father never signed any paperwork. Oh, this conversation is just getting started.